Howdy. <clears throat> We're online again. Let's see if we can find some news here. <coughs> but look at Mature first. Yeah, there's some news. Hi, welcome to Twitch. We're here an hour early. Who knows? Maybe somebody will show up and say hi. Got a bunch of brushes here. We got a carving knife. We need to carve something. We got some paints that are hiding underneath my beautiful picture. We got a few other things going on. Let's see. Let's 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 inform Dr. Ganavan what's happening. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, people have been informed. All right, let's see where we at here. Let's go back to the news. Yeah, there is news. There's German news today. Um, let's get started on some painting before we start on the news here. Let's see if we can finish making that look really white. This is the egg temper. Remember, I told you about this last week. The key to fixing all mistakes in all mediums to keep a tube of egg temper around. Sennelier is the only brand that I know of that makes this stuff. Let's see. So anyways. Yes, that's right. Egg temper is the key to fixing any painting, oil, acrylic. Well, I guess in acrylic you don't have to worry about this. But in oil and watercolor, if you need to fix something, you can paint egg tempera over whatever it is you put down originally, let it dry, and then you can just keep painting. And actually, apparently it's fairly common in older times for painters to do most of the painting in egg tempera and then finish in oil. And it is impossible to really tell the difference. Interesting. Interesting stuff. So there is news. We'll get to the news here in a second. There's exciting German news. Well, European. Okay. Now, now we just let that dry. I spent almost two hours doing uh, wood blocks cutting earlier. I sort of got up in it. I'm, I'm converting all of these over to my YouTube channel so that they can be rewatched on YouTube rather than make both shows. I'm just going to do one and copy it over. And hopefully a lot of people will come here and see this live because it's cool. So, we're doing this one too. 
It's just another coat. Okay, that's done. Let it dry, 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 dry. And let's see what we got over here. That one looks okay. Let's leave that one. No, no. Put another coat on. Let's put another coat on this because we because we have the white paint. You know, you probably won't see very much. Well, I guess you'll see a little bit here. So, where was I? Ah, yes, the news. Die Nachrichten. Royal Premiere. Meghan and Harry zeigen erstmals Tochter Lily. Endless zeigen Meghan und Harry ihren Familien Zubox, Tochter Lilibet Diana. Die Fans sind begeistert. Okay, so that should be easy. Okay, Meghan and Harry showed the public, their new daughter, Lilibet Diana, and the fans are enthusiastic. Yeehaw. Me, personally, I don't care. But the nice thing about that kid's life is she will have should have a decent amount of money. The bad thing is she's going to be famous whether she likes it or not. So there you have it. Um, let's see, we let that dry. We clean the brush because it's tempera. If you don't clean the brushes with tempera, your brushes will die immediately. They'll be dry in an hour and they will be basically impossible to ever fix again. It will be as bad as or worse than dried acrylic. Let's see, what else is news here? Drosten verbreitet erfreuliche Omicron-Daten. Beachtliche Erkenntnisse auch zu BioNTech und AstraZeneca. Einen Tag vor Weihnachten bestimmt die Omicron-Variante einmal mehr das Geschehen auf der Welt. Ein neuer Studie entlag dem deutschen Virologen Dr. Christian Drosten etwas Optimistus. So, they've got some new data. The preliminary data says that Omicron is probably not as dangerous as the Delta variant and some of the earlier variants. Hopefully that is true, although I would be, I'm still a little leery about it. Um, the news actually, the data from England is, is that it's less virulent. The data from South Africa is that it's less virulent. However, the problem is in South Africa, the average age is 27, and in England, it's 40. So the data from South Africa is skewed. It might be that things are better there, or that Omicron is better there. What have I done? And what? Oh, okay. It's just bad lighting. Okay, cool. I thought maybe I'd smear myself with white paint. So... Anyways, the data looks pretty good. Maybe it won't be as bad. RKA, Richard Koch Institute, bestätigt erste Omicron Todfall in Deutschland. Alter Spanner bekannt.
München. Deutschland hat den ersten Todesfall, Todesfall nach einer Infektion mit der Omicron Variant des Coronavirus. Virus. Das teilte das RKI mit. RKI mit. Bei den Verstorbenen handelt es sich um ein, eine Person im Alter zwischen 60 und 79 Jahren. Okay, so the person who died was from Munich. They're between 60 and 80 years old. It's the first case here of a death. Nach actuellem Zustand hat das RKI in Deutschland bislang insgesamt 3,198 Corona-Infektionen der neuen Omicron-Variante zugeordnet. So to this point we've had um, 3,198 Omicron infections in this country. Das entspricht einem Zuwachs am Fallen von 25% plus 810 Fälle gegenüber dem Vortag. So we increased 25% overnight, Schreib writes the RKI on Thursday to development of these counts. Uh, like I said, we had the first person dead. There's 256 people in that age group who have it. And that was all the important stuff. All the Lidl Kaufland und Company. Das sind die Offnungszeitung der Supermarkte über Weihnachten in Bayern. Okay, now this is important info if you live in Germany. When are the supermarkets going to be open? Because unlike the English-speaking world, everything here shuts down on Sundays, and everything shuts down on holidays, and everything shuts down when there's a strike. And yeah. Okay. Und ja. Yeah. Not good. And so, yeah. So, here's the situation. What opening times are valid for the supermarkets, discounters, and druggery marks in Heiligenabend and Uber die Weihnachtstage? Okay, Heiligenabend is Christmas Eve and Weihnachtstage, Weihnachtstage, sorry, Weihnachtstage, that's Christmas and Boxing Day. We have two days of Christmas here just like England does. Aldi, Rayway, Lidl, pretty much everything's open until 2 o'clock tomorrow. And then it's closed. Aldi's only open until 1300, then their employees go home early. Good for them. You can go buy stuff if you're near a train station. Grocery markets in a train station and the gas station should still be open. That's another weird thing about Germany. The stores in the train station are open on Sundays and holidays. Which is nice if you live in a town that has that stuff. Unfortunately, Augsburg does not have any of that stuff, so it means I would have to take a one and a half hour train ride to go to Munich if I need to buy anything on Christmas Day. So basically, this weekend, I am out of luck. Nothing going on. Every cow still has to have a little bit of grass out front. Some little tufts. Uh, what else is happening? 
Kate and William by Intiman Blick Contact in Concert at Top. Video gave viral. So they gave each other a sideways glance at some concert. Ooh. Yeah, we, we have a lot of fascination with the British royals here. Probably because we don't have our own royals anymore. There are such still people here with titles of nobility. They were allowed to keep their titles of nobility. But they are not nobles. I knew one of them. I worked with uh, Rao Bismarck. English teacher, who is, yes, the great, great, great Dan daughter of Otto von Bismarck, or something like that. And to tell you the truth, she was a completely normal person. No different than anybody else. And no, she did not inherit his fortune, and she had to work just like the rest of us. Ukraine überfallen. Putin aussage at the press conference bereitet Sorgen. Merz will Ukraine Waffen liefern. Okay, so this is about Putin's threat to invade the Ukraine. It's all our fault. Every, it's NATO's fault. We did everything wrong. Russia, of course, has done nothing wrong. And actually, I do, I do sort of get his point of view. As he says in his speech, he says in his speech, you know, if, if Russia put missiles on in Canada aimed at the United States America would be very angry and that is true that caused the Cuban Missile Crisis once upon a time <coughs> so making surrounding Russia with NATO countries is probably not the best way to win friends and influence people in the Kremlin I agree with that there was a verbal promise made I believe it was by, I believe it was made by George Bush the first, but I am, might have been Bill Clinton, that we would not push NATO west of Germany if Germany was allowed to reunite. And now NATO is in Poland, Slovakia, I believe Slovakia, all the um, Baltic countries, And so, while I don't think NATO is going to start a war against Russia, given Russia's history of being invaded by the West, I do understand, to some degree, Putin's position, although I think he's milking old fears for political gain. I do not think NATO would ever start a war with Russia, NATO has never started a war with anyone. Unfortunately, the United States has started a war with Iraq. And so, yeah, it could be seen as a threat. One can take it that way. I certainly hope it does not come to that. It will be very bad for everybody involved. And considering that I have a lot of Russian friends here, it will also be unpleasant. See, there's a couple of viewers there. Please feel free to ask questions. That is what makes my life exciting, is when you ask questions on the other end of the telephone, chat window, or whatever it is that we're using here. So, yeah. I'm a little bit like the great Karnak, but I'm far cheaper to access. Tomorrow night I will probably go to Augsburg and hang out. I'm not 100% sure yet. There are Omicron cases in Augsburg. 
There are five people in the hospital, 24 people under quarantine, two weeks, mandatory stay at home, do not come out for any reason. I don't know what will happen. You will see. I don't think Putin wants, I, don't, I think Putin's smart enough to know that invading the Ukraine will probably be a bad deal for everybody involved, including Russia. But I'm not sure. I really don't know. Well, let's see. Is there any other exciting news here? Corona inflict. Mindestens drei verschiedene Antrage in Bundestag. Tendenz festigt sich. Solidifying the idea that they're going to make everybody get vaccinated pretty moot for me because I am vaccinated and boosted. Basically, we're just doing the last detail work here. This one will be finished tonight. I think they'll probably go for the for the required vaccination. I think that'll make people really unhappy. 25% of the population will be violently resistant. But yeah, I think they'll do it. That's how Germans think. I don't know, we'll see. Hartz IV, Urtau Kurz vor Weihnachten bringt gute Nachricht vor Eltern. So obviously they're going to raise the, the money payments for people who are long-term unemployed, which is fine to me. They don't get very much money right now. They are not living high on the hog.
anything else here? A bunch of stuff about the Corona crisis, fluke chaos, flight chaos, Lufthansa cancels 33,000 flights. Also, because extreme many pilots are sick. Oh, there you have it. I don't honestly know if they're letting Americans into the country right now. The English and Scottish, everybody in the UK is banned for both business and pleasure. I myself decided I'm not going to check here because I don't yet know really how dangerous Omicron is. I should probably save the money. It's cold. And the worst thing would be is if I went over there and then had to do a quarantine when I came back, either with or without Omicron. Some places, if you come back into Germany after you travel there, you must quarantine for 14 days. As of right now, Czechia is not on that list, but it could well change at any minute. And so, name of esteem. Not Chesky. I won't be able to go over there. Which is a bummer. Prague is a great city. It has cool stuff. Nice people. And if you stay out of the tourist area, it's not expensive. Tourist area, even the tourist area over there is pretty cheap. It, it's, there are expensive places. You can buy all kinds of expensive stuff if you're so inclined to do so. They have nice expensive art glass and paintings and pretty much whatever you want. You can spend any amount of money. They have expensive hotels that cost four, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred euros a night, a thousand euros. But like I stay in a pension there, and that's about 15 euros a night, 20. And I have a room. It's sort of a cross between a hostel and a hotel. I have a room but there are like hostile, st hostile style um, bath and showers, which means they're, you know, public or, you know, shared. And then there's a nice, there's a couple of nice hostels over there. There's that A and O. Can, I can highly recommend if you're an adult. There's this hostel, there's one hostel I stayed in and down in the center of town two years ago, which is a great place if you're 25. But if you're my age, it's really not a good fit. Yeah, I think I like that. That looks good. Looks like a good painting. And 
Yeah, we just got to finish up here. Yeah, there are all different kinds of hospitals in Europe. There's a really nice one I know of in Groningen, uh, several of them actually, which are good regardless of your age. Actually, all the ones there are pretty friendly regardless of your age. The thing is, they're all friendly regardless of your age. It's just that if you go to a hospital that's all young kids and you're 50 years old or 60 years old, you're probably not going to feel like you fit in very well. And the kids are going to be kind of freaked out. Hey, what's this little person doing here? Which can be kind of fun sometimes. Europeans, it's not usually such a big deal. Americans, they kind of freak out. Huh? What's going on? However, if you're in Holland, stay okay is used by everybody from 16 to 86 or older. And if you're in Germany, Czechia, or Poland, the A&O hostels are used by everybody, regardless of age. And they're really nice. They're, they're frankly, they're as nice in some ways as staying at like a Holiday Inn or something. In fact, they're probably nicer. But yeah, you can find a pension in... in Prague outside of Old Town, really cheap. That's not a problem. If you want to spend money, they have really expensive hotels there. I had, I had breakfast in one of them the first time I went over there. It was a nice breakfast. In the old town, everybody speaks English in all, all the uh, tourist-type places. As soon as you leave old town, that is not true. And old town is only about 10%, well, even less, 5% maybe. Maybe 5%? 5% of Prague? If you're outside of Prague in the, in the hinterlands, don't hold your breath. Bring Google Translator. You're going to need it. Or learn some Czech. Good luck with that. It's a hard language. It is harder than Russian. I know. I know some Russian. Russian is pretty straightforward. Czech is going to be a little more difficult. Yeah, it just needs a signature block, and this one's finished. Maybe it's done. I like that. That's the first painting I've finished in a while. All right, so...
what else do we have here? Let's go to science news. See if there's anything exciting happening in the world of science. Feast or forage? Study finds circuit that helps brain decide. Study reveals a protein's key contribution to heterogeneity of neurons. Eh. How to maximize the potential of polymer materials with Raman spec spectocracy. I can't even say that word anymore. Ah, this is interesting. Engineers devise a way to selectively turn on RNA therapies in human cells. That's an interesting possibility. That may lead to various cancer cures that will blow your mind. Strangely enough, the egg tempera is not yet dry. We'll have to put this aside and come back to it. Otherwise, we're just going to make it up. Let's take a look at this one. Carbon nanotube base sensor can detect SARS COVID 2 proteins. Well, that may be a good thing. Uh, this looks pretty boring. Science news for all to enjoy. Nothing exciting here. Looks weird. Science news magazine. Science News Daily. I think I'll skip all of these. Any other ideas for news? What else should we comment on? Let's see what's happening on CNN. Hmm. You know what? Let's do a green and white flag. I like doing flags that are not from any particular nation. Or at least not any well-known nation. So let's do this one. Okay. There. Mm. See Bill's Bill Nye's warning about Doomsday Glacier. EU is about to call fossil fuel sustainable. That's insane. Very little here. Intel apologizes in China after backlash on. Xinjiang statement. They're idiots for moving your business there. And there's a big news story here about starvation in Afghanistan, which I find very strange. Mainly because the pictures they're showing, the, these kids did not starve to death in, since, since August 31st. These kids were clearly starving for years before that when America was in charge. But strangely, it's only out in the news now. Inquiring minds want to know why that is.
here in you. I'm not sure where to go with some of these in this one. Let's see what time is it? It is 1747. I think I'm going to take a 10 minute break. And then I'll come back and we'll do something else. I'm not sure what yet. Maybe we'll work on one of these drawings that needs to be finished. Hmm have an idea. Look at that big piece of paper that I just had. I had a big piece of paper here. It was extremely useful. There it is. Watch this. On break till six, it's five forty eight now. Yeah, I'm going to take a few minutes break and then I'll be back. I'm going to turn off the recording.